we're going to be taking a look today at some more showcase stuff. You guys tend to love this. If this video gets 50 plus views, or sorry, not views, likes, I will do another one. And if you guys have a script, whether it's yours, someone else's, uh, that you want to share that you think others will find useful, definitely hit me up at my uh, About tab on my main page channel. Uh, it has my email, Discord. Uh, if you email me, just let me know what the script is, a link to where you got it from, uh, and just a quick explanation of it so I understand fully how to use it, and hopefully you'll see it in a future video. All right, today uh, we're doing some more from this website like in the previous one, just because there's so many on here that are amazing. Um, this is uh, computeredge.com. Link is going to be in the description, and just uh, find the name of whatever I tell you in that part of the video, and just click, and you'll be able to find a quick explanation also, uh, but the download being the main one. Most of these, they have a zip file. Uh, or just the AHK file. Um, I think some of them you might have an executable, but yeah, you should always download a script just to be safe because, hey, some website you don't know. You should never download an executable <laughs> directly. Uh, so this one doesn't have a hotkey, but if you want, you can assign a hotkey up here just by doing like F1. Um, and then that way, every time you push F1, it's just going to reload uh, and open the GUI for you. Uh, but we're just going to keep it like this. Uh, so this one is just called uh, the How Long Away Calendar, and so I'm going to launch that if I can find it. I got a lot on here. There we go. Let me, uh... So yeah, it's pretty much just a simple GUI. Obviously, if you want to make it fancier, go for it. Um, but all you're going to do, really, is it automatically grabs your system time or date. So it's Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. You can obviously change it. Uh, enter date 2. Uh, it's going to start with today's day 2, but, you know... Hey, I'm planning something. I need to know how many days it's going to be. So let's say April 11th this year. I need to know exactly how many days that is. All you do is push calculate. Get a little pop up here. Uh, years, zero years. But it is a month and 21 days away. So this is great for uh, planning stuff versus having to manually uh, use like a calendar and you know count out the weeks and then the days. Um, so this is really cool. Now, obviously, it's only doing years, months, and days. Uh, if you do want to put the weeks in there, it's pretty simple. All you really got to do is uh, go in there and just add kind of like your own, like, um, uh, if uh, from today, years, months, days. So you just need to add, like, the weeks, and uh, that's pretty simple in the calculator stuff. I've done videos on that, so just check out, like, uh, I think it's something about math and auto hockeys. That would help you uh, figure out how to do that. Um, so, yeah, you can always add the weeks to it, because right now all it does is have the days. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's very simple. I find this very useful. You know, today is the 21st, but if I push the first and say calculate, it will also go back in time. and You can see, like, oh, that was 20 days ago versus looking at the future. So you can look at the past and the present, which is very helpful. All right, uh, let's move on to our next uh, showcase. All right, this one is uh, basically, it's a spell checker. This can be useful for if you're typing in a program that doesn't by default have a spell checker. I'm gonna use the ID here, Notepad++. I don't think it has a built-in spell checker. I'm sure you can get an add-on. Uh, has syntax correction, but that's not really the same thing. Um, so let's launch that. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu, where did I put that? Oh, I just named it Test3. Not a good name for a HK file. All right, so that's up and running. Um, this script is pretty long. As you can see, it's over 5,000. But most of that is basically hotkeys, as you can see, uh, with the different, like, common misspelling so the cool thing is you can always add it is an alphabet order but if you want you can always go to the end and you know say like one's add it uh anything below this point was added by the user so yeah um yeah let's try that out um so it also does capitalization stuff so if i type in uh june for example um and i don't capitalize it so i say june you see, it just auto-corrected it for me uh, to capitalize it, which is pretty cool. 
So yeah, if you misspell a word that's in the uh, script, it will. Another cool thing is you can do, uh, I think it's Windows H in this program. Control H. Okay, let's see here. Windows H. Should be Windows H. Not sure why that's not working. Let's take a look here. Hmm. Oh, you got to select the text, I guess. Okay, so let's, uh, let's add my name. That's how most people spell it. So Windows H, there we go. It's automatically going to pull this up. So anytime uh, I type out Tom, because I spell it slightly different, I'm going to put it as T-H-O-M. Now something to, and I'm going to push OK. This file has been modified. Uh, do you want to reload? Yes. Um, so basically, what's happening is, there we go. It just added it. Now, something to point out is if you have this as an executable, it will not work to add your own. You have to be able to have this in script form or manually enter it into your script and then compile it every time. Just because with an executable, you can't write live data to it like that. Um, so yeah, if we go down here to the bottom, there's mine that I added. Um, so that's pretty cool because it's so easy to add misspellings that if it's not in here, it should automatically find for you. All right, let's look at the next one. And like I said, all this will be in the description below and you just find it on that website. There's a lot of other good ones that I probably won't get around to covering all of them. So just look and explore uh, more than what I'm showing you here today. All right, this one is pretty cool. A lot of times when I'm especially like gaming, I wanna mess around with some files, uh, they can be hidden. Uh, so in your Explorer, uh, let's go just to my desktop, for example. You know, here's all the folders that are on there. But what a lot of people don't know is there are files that are on my desktop, but they're hidden. It's because they don't want, you know, noobs playing around with them if they don't know what they're doing because it can cause system or program problems. Uh, but there's a lot of times where I need to mess around with those files, move them, back them up. Uh, this is going to let me grab... Um, or see those better, but it does uh, those few things. So here's the script. Let me see. Uh, let me run it. Where did I put it? Here it is. All right. So for this one, the hotkeys I'm using are A, S, and D. I don't recommend doing that. That's just what I put in there for the sake of this video. Obviously, those are pretty much the only thing you. I think you should need to change in the script is the hotkeys. Because I don't recommend doing that because every time you try to type and it has an A in it, it's going to trigger. So definitely change those out. I forget what the default ones were, but I didn't like them. Um, but yeah, I just threw them in there. So yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, I believe it's running. And let's open our Explorer. So as you see, uh, basically I got perfectly two rows of files here. I'm going to go ahead and press A. And now we see that we got two more files that were hidden. We got desktop INI file and another INI file, a time saver. I'm not sure what that one does. Uh, but whatever uh, so uh, yeah and sometimes you have to double tap for some odd reason um, but you double tap it hides them again this is so much better than having to you know right click go to properties go to security find where the checkbox is and then once I'm done doing that all over again just to hide them again it's kind of a pain um, the other thing I like too is with the D press is uh, it changes uh, the extension on here to be visible or not so by default at least on my computer uh you know i see this is just called test 2 but if i hover my mouse over then i can see what type of file it is uh this is great for like pictures and stuff but i can just sit there double tap d and now i can see that it is an ahk file without having to put my mouse over top of it uh you know these are mp4s that i like a lot because it just makes it so much easier to see Especially when it comes to pictures, if I'm looking for a specific uh, format versus having to hover over every single one or go into the settings. So that one's great. I love that one. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go on to the next one. Alrighty, and on this one, we are calling this one Mouse, me uh, mouse Measure or Map Measurer. I forget what it's actually called on the site. Uh, let's see if I can find that real quick. Oh, there's so many to look at. Uh, oh, yeah, it is just called Mouse Measure, this one right here. Okay, so we're going to be using Google Maps for this one. Um, 
Real quick though, with the code, uh, once again, there's not a lot you need to change here. Um, you can uh, change some of the variables here with their defaults of, you know, how many pixels, uh, units, inches is its default. You can change it to miles, feet, whatever. Um, but you can manually do that also in the program uh, once it's running. Uh, after that, really, you know, there's uh, just your hotkeys like control and left mouse button. Just find those um, for all these change them to whatever you want and uh yeah but yeah let's go ahead and run this one and the nice thing is it does pop up right away with a message box uh just because there is a lot of hotkeys and instructions uh once you do it the first once or twice it's pretty easy to remember but it's nice to have those there you can always just delete this whole message box if you don't want it uh, but yeah, so basically, uh, let's just see it in action. We're going to use Google Maps uh, just because it's easy. I know this Google Maps has the, something like this functionality built in, but this is great for uh, other stuff uh, if you have like an image or something. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and let's see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, the program is running, so we're going to go ahead. And down here, uh, I guess you can't see because my head's in the way. Down here we have our... Uh, little uh, measuring thing so for every i don't know that's maybe like an inch or something is considered 500 feet on this map so we're going to put our mouse right over that little starting line push control left click and then you see it, the cool thing is it does make a little red line and we're just going to put it at the end of that mark so right about there yeah that looks about oh crap messed it up there we go make it straight um so that we got that and what we're going to do is we're going to click Alt. We're going to get another little uh, box here. Um, so it's got the pixel range. Calibration range is 1. Inches, well, we need to do right here. It's 500 feet. So we're just going to change that to feet. Uh, we're going to push Submit. Let me readjust that. All right, so here's our map. It's just oh, some random place I zoomed in on. And uh, we're just going to look at, oh, I don't know. Uh, say we work here at this farm, and we get off work, and we want to go to the tavern. Why not? We're going to go ahead. We're going to left-click, say the parking lot's like right here, and then we're just going to start drawing. Uh, there's a little bend in the road here, so we'll do that. We'll click. You just keep clicking, and it keeps doing it. You know, shows you every single mark of how many feet we're at, uh, whatnot, and say the parking lot's right here. So we're going to get here. We're going to push shift. That's the end of our route. And we're going to get a message box. So it's going to show us uh, kind of a breakdown of each part. You know, this is uh, half of the 100 feet. Obviously, depending on what type of unit you're going to need, uh, check out my math video on auto hockey so you can automatically have this do a little bit better calculations than what it's doing here. Um, so you can always add on to that to make it a little bit better uh, and do some math for you. Um, but yeah, so as you see right here, distance is 5.636 feet. Obviously, I should have, where it said 1, I should have put uh, 500 instead. Uh, that's my mistake. But you would have put the unit uh, as 500 feet. I did 1, so I would just uh, figure out the math for this. But, yeah, that's my mistake. Yeah, this one's really cool. I just I like how it has the ability to draw this red line. It shows you each point uh, if you're making multiple stops or you just really want to break it down, you know, especially if you're giving someone instructions. Uh, and then it just shows you the final measurement here, which that obviously should uh, be a little bit higher than that because <laughs> I accidentally put the wrong unit number in. I put 1, should be 500. Uh, but yeah, you can just push OK. It stays there. You are uh, you got that. And so yeah, I hope you guys uh, found these useful. If this video gets, you know, like 100 likes, I'll do some more showcase videos. Once again, let me know if you guys have any that you want to share, whether whether you're yours or someone else's, hit the subscribe button, throwing out videos every single week having to do with automation, usually in auto hotkeys, and I hope to see you all on the next one. See ya!